This is Andrew Ritchie, and today I'll be talking to you about a very interesting case which was eventually diagnosed as Takayatsu arteritis. The patient being presented today is a 15-year-old female who presented to her primary care physician with a chief complaint of pleuritic chest pain which radiated to the left shoulder. The patient's past medical history was significant for refractory hypertension as well as a left nephrectomy. The initial workup began with a routine blood panel which included inflammatory markers. This returned with an elevated CRP as well as ESR. The next step in the workup was an MR angiogram of the chest, abdomen, and pelvis, which was subsequently followed by a CT angiogram of the chest, abdomen, and pelvis. On the left side of this slide, you'll see two images which were taken from the MRA study. Figure A is a maximum intensity projection, and figure B is a sagittal cut through the thoracoabdominal aorta. Figure A demonstrates a long segment stenosis beginning at the level of the celiac artery and extending through the left common iliac artery. This is demarcated by the white and blue arrows. Additionally, in this image, you can see stenosis of the renal artery demarcated by the white arrowhead. Figure B simply shows an additional cut through the sagittal plane, redemonstrating this long segment stenosis. Given the findings seen on the MRA study, a CTA was requested. On the left side of this slide, we can see two images taken from the CTA study. Figure A, an axial cut through the aortic arch, and figure B, which is a sagittal cut through the thoracoabdominal aorta. What we can see in both figure A and B that was not clear on the MRA is significant circumferential wall thickening which involves the thoracoabdominal aorta. Additionally, there is redemonstration of the long segment stenosis beginning at the level of the celiac artery. In figure A, we can clearly see the circumferential wall thickening marked by the white arrow. And if we take a look at figure B, we can also see the long segment wall thickening beginning at the white arrowhead below the level of the celiac artery. Additionally, we can see involvement of the SMA marked by the yellow arrowhead. This study demonstrated significant stenosis of the proximal SMA. Here we can see an axial cut at the level of the right renal artery taken from the CTA study. This image demonstrates significant wall thickening as well as stenosis of the right renal artery. Given the clinical and imaging features seen, Takayatsu arteritis was the final diagnosis. A few teaching points about Takayatsu arteritis is that it is a large vessel vasculitis primarily affecting the thoracoabdominal aorta and its major branches. A key point to make is the patient's age. Takayatsu arteritis typically presents in the young adult or pediatric populations less than 50 years old. This is important because it excludes one of the differential diagnoses. When looking at imaging studies, if you see a long vessel, circumferential wall thickening with or without stenosis, Takayatsu arteritis should be considered within the differential. An imaging feature that can be seen on both MRI and CTA imaging is wall enhancement. However, this does not have to be present to clinch the diagnosis. Other imaging modalities such as conventional angiography are less useful because they cannot demonstrate the wall thickening and only show the luminal diameter. Ultrasound can also be used for initial screening. However, CTA and MRA remain the workhorse. The top differential diagnosis in this case would be giant cell arteritis. Giant cell arteritis is a large vessel vasculitis with significant imaging and clinical overlap with Takayatsu arteritis. However, the primary method to differentiate giant cell arteritis from Takayatsu arteritis is simply by 
patients age. Giant cell arteritis typically presents in patients over the age of 50. While the symptomology can be highly variable depending on the vessels affected, it classically presents with headache, jaw pain, and visual disturbances. Also, there is an association with polymyalgia rheumatica. Polymyalgia rheumatica is an inflammatory disorder which causes proximal muscle weakness of the upper and lower extremities, as well as muscle pain. An additional differential diagnosis is middle aortic syndrome, or MAS. MAS is an uncommon idiopathic disease, which is found in the pediatric and young adult population. MAS causes hemodynamically significant stenoses of the abdominal aorta and its major branches. Depending on the level and branches of the aorta affected, Symptoms can include refractory hypertension, claudication, or even intestinal ischemia. Middle aortic syndrome can be differentiated from this case because of the involvement of the thoracic aorta. Middle aortic syndrome would not demonstrate wall thickening above the level of the celiac artery as seen in this case. A few take-home points from this case. Takiatsu arteritis is large vessel vasculitis, which is primarily found in the pediatric and young adult populations. This disease primarily affects females at a 1 to 9 ratio. Patients may present with a variety of symptoms, which can be as vague as fever and fatigue. But as the disease progresses, these symptoms could include hypertension, claudication, and even diminished peripheral pulses. Imaging features that would suggest Takiatsu arteritis are long segment circumferential wall thickening of the thoracoabdominal aorta and its major branches. This can be seen with or without long segment stenosis or wall enhancement. Takiyatsu arteritis typically follows a relapsing and remitting clinical course and is normally treated with immunosuppressive agents.